Welcome to GMAT Math Online Math Prep Videos. In this GMAT Math Online video, we explain how to solve fraction problems. Some fraction problems are straightforward enough that we can solve them without defining an equation. We call these calculation problems. Here is an example. Harriet bought 120 $50 government savings bonds at 8 tenths of their face value and gave three quarters of them to grandchildren, nephews, and nieces for Christmas presents. If she sold the remainder later at nine-tenths of their face value, what was the net amount she spent on the bonds? Let's summarize the pertinent facts of this problem. She purchased 120 $50 bonds at eight-tenths of face value, gave three quarters of them as gifts, and then sold the remainder at nine-tenths of face value. What was the net amount she spent? Here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. The net amount spent is equal to the original amount spent minus the proceeds from the sale of the remaining bonds. So here's the original amount. Original amount equals 8 tenths times 120 times 50, which equals 4,800. And here are the number of bonds left over after she gave them to her relatives. Number of bonds left over equals 120 minus 3 quarters times 120. And that equals 120 minus 90, which equals 30. Next, we calculate the amount she received from selling the bonds that were left over. Sale revenue from leftover bonds equals 9 tenths times 30 times 50, which equals 1,350. Finally, we calculate the net amount by subtracting the sale revenue from the original amount she spent. Net amount equals original amount minus sale revenue which equals 4,800 minus 1,350, and that equals 3,450. So the correct answer is B. Now let's look at some equation problems. Typically, a word problem can be more easily solved if we set some variable, say x, to the value the problem asks for, and then formulate an equation using x. If we formulate and solve the equation correctly, then we solve the problem. Or, in some cases, it may be simpler to let x be some other value, from which we can easily calculate the final answer. Let's look at a few examples. Mary spends her monthly take-home pay as follows. One-third goes to rent. One-sixth to food and clothing. One-eighth to savings one-fourth to miscellaneous expenses. The remainder she uses for entertainment. If her non-entertainment expenses are $2,100, what does she spend on entertainment? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. In this problem, we'll find it simpler to let X be Mary's take-home pay. Then if we sum these fractions of her pay and multiply the result by X, we should get $2,100. Note that the smallest common denominator of 3, 6, 8, and 4 is 24. So, 1 third plus 1 sixth plus 1 eighth plus 1 fourth times x equals 8 twenty-fourths plus 4 twenty-fourths plus 3 twenty-fourths plus 6 twenty-fourths times x, which equals 21 twenty-fourths x and that equals 2100. So x equals 2100 times 24 over 21, which equals 2400. That's her take-home pay. Now to get her entertainment expenditure, we simply subtract 2100 from 2400, and we get $300. So the correct answer is D. Here's another problem. Sean has M canisters of flour, one-fifth of which are empty. He is making a large batch of bread and empties three more canisters. If one-half of the canisters are now empty, what is M? 
Here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. We'll count the empty canisters as follows. m over 5 plus 3 equals m over 2. m over 5 is how many canisters were empty to begin with. Now in making the batch of bread, he empties three more canisters. So the total number of empty canisters is m over 5 plus 3. And that number is half the canisters, or m over 2. Now we solve this equation for m by multiplying each side by 10, which is the least common denominator of 5 and 2. So multiplying by 10, we get 2m plus 30 equals 5m. Therefore, 30 equals 5m minus 2m, and so 30 equals 3m. Finally, we get 10 equals m. So the correct answer is C. And here's a final problem. An apple grower stores boxes of harvested apples in two different storehouses. Storehouse A is full, but has only three-fifths the capacity of storehouse B. And at present, storehouse B is only five-eighths full. What fraction of the total number of stored apple boxes is in storehouse A? Summarizing the problem's pertinent information, we get the following. Storehouse A is full, but only three-fifths of B. Storehouse B is five-eighths full. What fraction of the stored boxes is in storehouse A? Here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. Let X and Y be the capacities of storehouses A and B, respectively. Then X equals three-fifths times Y so that 5 thirds x equals y. But storehouse b is only 5 eighths full. So the number of apple boxes currently in b is 5 eighths times 5 thirds times x, which equals 25 20 fourths times x. Thus, there are still slightly more boxes in storehouse b than in storehouse a. So the total number of boxes currently stored in A and B together is the sum of X and what's currently in storehouse B. That is, X plus 25 24 times X, which equals 24 plus 25 over 24 times X. And that equals 49 over 24 times X. The fraction of that total that is in storehouse A is computed by dividing x by the total. That is x over 49x divided by 24, which equals x times 24 over 49x, which equals x times 24 over x times 49, and that equals 24 over 49. Notice that x in the numerator cancels with x in the denominator. It was useful to use the variable x to do the calculation, but it wasn't part of the result. So the correct answer is choice D. For more on fraction problems, see our other videos and go to www.gmatmath.online. And you can get our ebooks GMAT Math Basics, GMAT Math Problem Solving, and GMAT Math Data Sufficiency. Thanks for your interest.